We sure cleaned them out last night. <laughs> you ought to have seen them run, like scared jackrabbits. What about the Johnson family? Well, I was kind of saving that last. Jed Johnson's plenty tough. That's all the more reason you should run him out first. The people regard him as their leader. If he has a chance to organize and fight back, drive him out today. He and his whole brood. They'll be out by night. Why, Dad, and you thought they wouldn't do it to us. Danny, ride down to Kentucky store, tell him to find Keith, and ask him to get here in a hurry. You think you got old Kentuck licked, huh? Why, I ain't even beginning to fight. Come on, you weasel face, red skin vomits. And then I said, Come on, the whole thousand of you. I'll shoot the darn pants right off of you. What? They didn't, they surrounded me. One, did I take them off? Two, three, four, five. Now, man, I, I was only telling him about what happened today to. Indians attacked this. Yes, but you didn't shoot any pants off them because Indians don't wear pants. Oh, now, men, I, I, uh, uh, A nice mess. I suppose you fixed the storeroom all up nice and tidy like I told you. I know just how you feel, Kentuck. Now, you go right on keeping your blood circulating back there in that storeroom. You've got enough boxes back there to stand off 2,000 Indians. Oh. Kentuck! 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 What's happened, Danny? Dad got one of them warning notices. He sent me in here to find you and Keith and tell you to come a-running. Well, Keith's down to Jenkins' house. Jenkins' wife's having another baby. Say, Danny, you ride right back to the farm. Tell your father and Mary Lee we'd be out there quicker than a flea snort. Jump and jeepers! This'll keep my blood circulating. Jenkins, Johnson County ought to be proud of you. That makes three in two years. First a girl and now twin boys. Maybe next time it'll be triplets. I'll do my best, Dr. Kenton. Come a hopping, Keith. There's trouble brewing down at the Johnson farm. Them consarn land grabbers have given notice to go. Here, I brought your rifle. You won't need that doctor's outfit on this trip. Hang on to this for me. All right, doctor. What are we waiting for? Seeing any young Mary Lee? No sign of them. Well, <laughs> they'll be here. 
And with Keith and old Kentuck, we'll be able to stand off an army. I hope Kentuck was able to find Keith. He said he knew where he was. Here, son, you handle this rifle just in case it's needed before they do get here. Here they are! Any sign of them yet? No, them kind of things wait till it's dark so you can't see them. <laughs> Jump and jeepers! Let them come! I'm ready for them. Hey, who invited you to this shindig anyway? I don't need any help from you. What's that? Why, you lop-eared, slab-sided son of a wood tick! You couldn't whoop a prairie dog without me! <laughs> well, I reckon you're right at that, you fire-eating old catamount. Say, you remember the day? If we go about this in the right way, it's our chance to find out who's heading this land-grabbing outfit. What do you got in your mind? Why not set a trap for them? We can grab one or two of them and uh, give them some of their own medicine. A good idea if it works. It'll work. We'll hide the horses and make it appear as though they've scared you away. All right, come on then, Kentuck. If you're not afraid of a real fight, <gasps> I'll shoot the pants off of them. Don't be afraid. Looks like they took our hint and vamoosed. I wonder. And fellow Johnson has been kind of give up without a fight. Come on. Keep away from the windows. Yes, they've gone. <laughs> there goes our little surprise party. Why, they didn't leave. Their horses are in there. Let's rush them and smoke them out. All right. Trap. I thought it looked too easy. Let's go. We don't know how to do Pick him up. Well, we sure run the pants off of this time. Yeah, that's just the trouble. We ran them off this time, but what about the next time and the next? I'd hope we'd be able to put an end to this violence and bloodshed in Johnson County. And that you young people would feel free to marry and bring up your families in safety and comfort. And not have to defend your homes with a rifle, like we did in the old Indian days. Quite a meeting our friend Johnson is calling together. 
That's just the thing we try to avoid. If that fool Frago hadn't blundered last night... It's just as well. We really ought to thank Johnson for calling this meeting. I hope he calls many more. I don't exactly see. Well, those people can't be two places at once. While they're here listening to Johnson, they can't be at their farms. Yeah, that's right. Frago shouldn't have much difficulty this time. With just the boy and the girl to scare away. Coffee? No, not now. May I, uh... Oh, certainly. Help yourself. Clark? Big things are happening in Washington. The Homestead Act is as good as passed. And any day now, President Lincoln is going to sign the railroad bill, authorizing the construction of a line to link the East with the West. Do you realize what that means to us? A new empire with Duluth, the western terminus of the railroad. And that means it's coming right through here. Think of it, man. Towns, cities, where there's nothing but prairie, farms, the price of land skyrocketing. Why, an inch will be worth more than a whole acre is now. And when that time comes, I mean to own every foot of land here in Johnson County, to sell at my own price. Might not be a bad idea if you attended that meeting as a sympathetic listener. Find out what they're up to. We're facing a condition that's just as bad, if not worse, than the old Indian days. Now, I'd like some suggestions as to the best thing to do. You're our leader, Jed. We're willing to abide by your decisions. All right. Then we'll run these land-stealing critters out of here before they have a chance to take root. Jumping jeeper, Jed. Now you're talking my language. We run the pants off of them. We know what they had to do in the old Indian days. We know what to do now. Yes. Let's get after him. My rifle's just spiling for action. Mine, too. I aim to burn the rust out of it with hot lead. Jeff, I think you're going at this thing in the wrong way. Oh, Doc, now we know you all mean well, but this is something that's just a little bit out of your line. Now, you go on bringing babies into the world. That's your job. Yes, but it's not a very pleasant job when you realize that these same babies may be put to sleep with a whine of bullets instead of lullabies. Well, go ahead, Doc. Let's hear what kind of a plan you have. Go ahead, Doc. Speak your piece. Well, now, don't all of you start jumping down my throat until I've had my say. First of all, I've got the same hopes that all of you have, to see Johnson County go ahead, prosper, grow into something big and fine, where people can enjoy the peace and happiness all humans are entitled to, and then pass these things on to their children. But you never can make this possible by violence and bloodshed. Suppose you win today. Drive these land grabbers off your lands. The next time, you might not be so lucky. Peace and security aren't worth anything unless they're lasting, permanent. You must realize that. You've all stood behind your plows with a gun in your hand and then come home not knowing whether you were going to find a cabin or a pile of ashes. You've all had that. Now why not try something else? I admit that I've had all the fighting I want. I'm plumb sick of it. But what else is there to do? Why not use law and order? Law? What law? We ain't got no law. Then make one, like they did in California. Out there, they organized a court, a miner's court. It wiped out lawlessness. We can do the same thing here. Appoint a judge and jury to pass on all land disputes. Any day now, we can expect Congress to pass the Homestead Act. Then we'll have a government land office here where we can legally register our land. Yeah, until then what? The decisions of our temporary court stands. Well, how about it? I'm going to try a duck suggestion. Good idea, I think. Yes. How about those who won't abide by his court idea? They'll be asked to leave the county. How? Just with words? Try words first, then we'll furnish them with a personal escort out of town. Let's give it a chance to see how it works out. And we'll call our organization the Johnson County Claim Association. Good, Good idea. And I propose we elect Jet Johnson our president. Yeah. You couldn't do better. Put her there, Mr. President. <laughs> Mary Lee, what happened? Those dirty renegades, they ran us off our place. What? 
And this proves. Did one of them men do that? They broke in the house and dragged us out. That's enough. Get your rifles, men. Oh, get your rifles. Oh, yes. Jeff, listen to me. Get out of my way, Keith. We just agreed that's not the way. Let our new court handle this. This ain't a matter for law. You promised to give it a fair trial, all of you. And this is our chance to test it out. Test nothing out. We'll shoot it out. If you go out there now, you'll ruin the very thing we're trying to build up. All right, Keith. We'll try it your way. Doc, we're all with you. The County Claim Association holds its first court tomorrow morning. It'll be a pleasure to attend. Me and my men have been waiting for it. You know that I abhor violence. Of course, I'll admit there are times when we must use a rather vigorous means of persuasion. However, not in this case. You mean you don't want us to show up? I don't think it'll be necessary. It takes a plaintiff as well as a defendant to make a case. Now, if the plaintiff in this instance is unavoidably absent... This might be a good time to remove that obstacle I mentioned the other day. Make it very impressive, Frago. We want to pull the teeth of this new Johnson County Claim Association before it gets a start. to get started, see if Jed's coming. That's enough, Mary Lee. I'm all right now. That's enough. <laughs> I gotta go to the courtroom. You see what you've done to me? Danny, leave that gun there with mine. Doc says no firearms in the courtroom. Stand up straighter, Pop. Don't you pop me. <laughs> Togged up like a dude now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me alone. I'll be looking all right. Shot Jed Johnson. What? Jed? Let me see. <laughs> I felt it in my bones that Jed was wrong in listening to all that law and order talk. He's dead because he listened to you. You with your laws. 
an order. Oh, Mary Lee, you mustn't. Don't touch me. You killed my father. You killed him. Daddy, Daddy, take me gone against your own judgment yet. You shouldn't have let him talk you into fighting thieves with soft words. You'd have been here today if you had done as you wanted to. Use your rifle and talk afterwards. Oh, we've not forgotten you, Jed. And we're going to do everything we can to make things come, justice, as you wanted them. Why don't you let us alone? Haven't you done enough? How was the funeral? From what I hear, very satisfactory. According to Jason's words, you'd think that Doc Kenton actually fired the shot. They're very bitter toward him. That's just what we want. Keep the tide rolling against him and it'll roll him right out of town before he gets any new ideas that might get in our way. Martha, if you dropped a few words to the women folk on your way to the store. Here's our mighty law and order fella. Why, he scares his enemies plumb to death just by talking to them. Maybe he'll try singing to us next. He ought to be wearing petticoats instead of pants. <laughs> he ought to be run out of Johnson County. If it wasn't for him, Jed Johnson would be alive today. Yeah, we ought to ride him out of town on a rail. Will you? You're a local bunch of Indians. You keep out of this, Kentuck. We'll run you out of town. What's that? Why, you wall-eyed, slab-sided wood kick you. Come on! The whole darn castle of you. I'll knock your darn pants right off of you. Never mind, Kentuck. I thought you were Jed Johnson's friend. Now you're trying to get him after he's just been buried. I was Jed Johnson's friend, but I ain't crazy enough to blame the doctor for his death. 
You're a bunch of ornery ingrates. That's what you are. Turned against a man you that took care of you when you were sick. What of all the? Uh, well, I never seen. I I I I, no. I disapprove of violence, but in this case, I stand squarely behind the men. Why, this Doctor Kenton should be run out of town. We are better rid of him. But we should encourage our men folks to. I think this town can get along without a lot of busybodies running around sticking their nose in other people's business. Why, how dare you talk that way to me? I dare a lot. You're nothing but a gossiping, troublemaking old cat. Get this, Min Jones. I'll never spend another penny in your store. That suits me just fine. Kentucky and me can get along without trade from your kind. Now, scat. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you dare there. Figure get out or I'll run the bustle off you. Well, I'd like to find the fellow that threw that rock through that window. And of all my brain numbskulls, blaming you. Well, maybe I ain't got no business sticking with a feller whose liver's turned white. No, you shouldn't. It'll turn people away from your store. Let it turn them. They don't pay their bills no how. When I stood out there a minute ago facing that crowd, I didn't seem to give a hang what happened to me. And you thought me and men was with them? That bunch of sodbusters? Why, I'm getting madder every minute. I love Jed like my own father. Well, how could they think that I... Think? Why, you ain't got anything to think with. Now, don't take it to heart too much, Doc. When they have a chance to cool off, they'll change their minds. No, they won't. Well, you're awake. Did you have a nice sleep, honey? You did. Anything I can get for you? No? Wouldn't you like to have a cup of coffee or something? Or... Mary Lee, it isn't good for a young girl like you to feel so hard and bitter. I know, Aunt Min. If it had been a total stranger, it wouldn't have been so hard to bear. But Keith... Dad wouldn't have listened to anybody else. I understand, honey. It's not easy trying to hate somebody that you've loved very much. I know. Yes, sir, I still think I'm right about this law and order thing. But law and order backed up by the right authority. Well, the Johnson Claim Association died with Jed Johnson. The men won't pay any attention to you anymore. Kentuck, outside of Mary Lee, what these people think of me doesn't matter. But the killing of Jed Johnson does. It proves something to me, that this association is a step in the right direction. That's why they shot down Jed. They were beginning to get scared. They thought his death would smash everything. You're talking a lot of sense, Doc. Yes, sir, this court idea is all right. But what we now lack is the right power to back it up. How you figuring on getting that? I'm going to see Governor Curry. You're going to bring the militia in here, like in the old ancient days? I don't think they'll have another plan. I'm leaving for Iowa City at once. And I'm not coming back until I've seen the governor and secured his help. Let me go with you, Doc. Oh, no, no, I've got another job for you. I keep your eye on this fellow Abbott while I'm gone. Abbott? Why, you don't suspicion him, do you? I've been thinking a lot about him lately. It's only a hunch, but worth following up. Give me a hand. Why didn't you stop Kenton when you had the chance? Thought he was quitting, running away. You thought. He isn't the running kind. He's headed for the state capitol. And you let him slip through your fingers. What'll we do if this meddling fool succeeds in bringing in a law enforcement agency? Running out farmers is one thing, but fighting the government is something else. Law is to protect those on the right, isn't it? By the time he returns, we'll be on the right. I intend to have legal possession of all the land. Not only that, the farmers are going to make us a present of their holdings willingly. You pull some clever ones, but this... Oh, it sounds wild. But with young Danny Johnson's help, Young Danny, you mean the son of the man? Yes. If my plan works out, we won't have to fight the government. The government will have to fight for us. Well, I guess I'll be going. 
Not that door. The back way. Let me take your hat. Thank you. Young Mr. Johnson is here, dear. Well, well, well. I'm glad to welcome you to my home, Danny. It's time we were getting better acquainted. And may I offer my deepest sympathy in your bereavement? Thank you. And I, too. Of course, you know how I feel about your father's death. His passing grieved me deeply. He was one of my closest friends. I didn't know that, Mr. Abbott. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Danny, every person in this county owes a debt to your father. And I think it only right that the people of this community should pay it off to you and your sister, Mary Lee. Thank you for saying that, Mr. Abbott. Right now, Mary Lee and I just don't know what to do. I know, son. And that's my main reason in sending for you. The least every public-spirited citizen can do is to see that the name of Johnson is honored. Only this morning, Mr. Frank Clark came to me with a proposal that I heartily approve. And I know it will have the backing of all your father's friends. Lunch is ready, dear. Oh, thank you. Come along, son. I was probably one of the best friends your father had, Danny. In fact, I was instrumental in having this county named after him. Where's Danny? He went over to Mr. Abbott's. What'd he go over there for? I don't know. Danny shouldn't have anything to do with this fellow Abbott. And why not? Mr. Abbott's my friend. I won't stand for you running him down. I wasn't running him down, only Doc said... I don't uh, care what Doc said. Danny, you mustn't talk like that to Kentuck. He only means it for the best. Why, you know he and Aunt Minna are our friends. Friends? Huh. They're Doc Kenton's friends, both of them. The only reason they took us in is because he asked them to. Danny, you know that's not true. Well, we don't need their help anymore. Mr. Abbott's going to take care of us. He's given us a nice place to live in, and he's going to see that we get our farm back. Oh, loved and admired. Jed Johnson. He fought for an ideal. An ideal that we must not allow to perish. Several days ago, Mr. Clark came to me with a proposal that I instantly approved. Mr. Clark, since this is your idea, suppose you tell our friends what it is. Gentlemen and ladies, if we are to stamp out this danger we're facing, there's but one way to do it. We've got to work together. And we can't do it by words. It's got to be action. Vigorous action. That's the talk we like. Jed Johnson had the right idea. But unfortunately, he was talked out of his purpose. What he really wanted was a protective association. And that's what I propose we form now. Great. Right. Right. That's what we need. We owe Jed Johnson an unpaid debt. And there is no better way to pay it and to make the county that he founded, and which was named after him, a safe place in which to live. And he left behind a son to carry on a proud name. Let him be our inspiration. Through him, we'll keep alive the memory of his valiant father. Right. I propose that we form the Johnson County Protective Association and that we honor the name of Johnson by appointing his son, Danny, our first president. I'm yeah. for that. That's good. I'm glad you all approve. Now, 
just as a pledge of good faith that we may work together in for the common good of all, I have prepared an agreement. And I think that Danny should be the first to sign. That yeah, as it yeah, should yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Why not? That's fine writing, Danny. And if you folks don't object, I'd like to sign next. The gullible fools, making us a present of their lands. People that have any more sense than they've got don't deserve to own property. Now we're ready for our good friend, Dr. Kenton. I hope he brings back the militia. We'll need their protection when these yokels wake up to what they've signed. Governor Curdy, we'll see you. How do you do, Mr. Governor? My secretary tells me that you have been waiting for three days to see me, Doctor. Yes, I have. Must be something of great importance. It is, sir. It concerns a very serious situation in Johnson County. Thank you. Surely the Indians haven't become unruly again. Not Indians, sir, but a group of men far more dangerous. An organized band of night riding land grabbers. They've spread a reign of terror over the entire section, driving out, shooting down, burning. This is astounding. Mr. Governor, the Constitution of the United States gives everyone the right to enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It also gives him the right to protect his family and defend his home even at the point of a gun, in the case of unlawful invasion. The state also provides such a law. Then grant me the right, sir, to enforce it, so that these sharks can be legally punished and driven out. Dr. Kenton, I want you to know that you shall have my wholehearted support and cooperation. Every power this office commands will stand solidly behind you. I'll not only grant you the authority you ask for, but I will also give you a judge who will work with you. This must be stamped out at once. Thank you, sir. Perhaps I shall thank you. This is no small service you are doing our state. Come and see me the first thing in the morning. And I'll have everything ready for your immediate departure. I'll be here. Hello, Jason. Uh, How are things going? We ain't got no reason to complain. I'm leaving Kirk here to kind of oversee things. Oversee things? What for? Why, it's only right the land company should want to know what's going on. What land company? Say, what are you talking about? Why, the Johnson County Land Company. It owns this place. What crazy talk is this? I own this farm. No, you don't. The Johnson County Land Company owns it. You signed your land over to them that day at the meeting. Why, I... I don't understand. I see you didn't read that paper carefully. Well, the company's going to give you protection on half of the profit. That's fair, isn't it? Hey, Kirk, you got your orders. See if the work don't slack up. All right. Get back to your work, Jason. You can't loaf around here and pay for your grub. And you, old woman, get back to your kitchen and see there's plenty of grub on the table. I might be with you for quite a spell. And I got a sure enough appetite. <laughs> you swear to conduct the duties of your office with integrity, fairness, and to the best interests of the state of Iowa? I do. I know you will do your best. As my special deputy, you will represent my office with the full power of the state behind you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Judge, I have great hopes for the young rascal. I don't think you will find him lacking in courage. Neither do I. I'm sure I shall enjoy working with him. I feel confident that I'll be well represented. <laughs> goodbye, my boy. Judge, goodbye. Goodbye, Governor.
Now, if you farmers can't discuss this matter in an orderly way, I'll have you thrown out. You can't scare us. We're going to stay right here until we come to some understanding. You said we were signing up to join a protective association. You're getting protection, aren't you? What do you got to kick about? We got plenty to kick about. We've been cheated. We've been lied to. It's downright thievery. It's all here in black and white. You signed with your eyes open. We signed because we believed in young Johnson. We didn't think that he'd sell us out. I don't believe he sold us out. The head of a concern generally knows what's going on. And young Johnson is the president. Mary Lee, it's mighty good of Mr. Abbott to give us this nice place to live in, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Danny, you shouldn't have talked to Kentucky the way you did. Why not? He and men are Keith's friends, not ours. Danny! Danny! You ought to get over at that land company office. You're accused of selling out your father's friends. Now, what are you talking about, Kentucky? That protective association that you're supposed to head. When you signed your name to that paper, you made Abbott and his henchmen a present of your farms. You better come on and get over there. Danny, you must go at once. We're not going to recognize that paper. And if one of your men steps his foot on my farm, I'll fill him full of holes. All right, Kirk. Hey, boy, come on, get a hold of it. Came from over there. What happened, Jason? Who shot you? I don't know. But you, you cheated us. Jed Johnson's boy. Why, you dirty traitor, I'll... What's the matter with you, you mad? I didn't mean any wrong, honest I didn't, I swear it. I only wanted to do what was right. Tell him, Kentuck, I, I didn't mean it. I, you've got to believe me. I didn't mean any wrong. You know I didn't, Kentuck. Kentuck's known me all my life. I didn't read that paper before I signed it. Nobody did. Why did they blame me? Well, it's a clear case of fraud with suspicion of complicity of murder. And that boy is in it as deep as the rest. But Danny is innocent. He wouldn't do anything like that. He's only a boy. I know that, Doctor. But those devils have tangled him up so cleverly in their scheme that it would be impossible to prosecute them without involving young Johnson. And they know that. Yes, I suppose so. I left here with everybody blaming me for his father's death. Now I come back to this. I know how you feel. It's an unfortunate position to be in. But without young Johnson, we wouldn't dare call the case. They made him head of the land company. You yourself heard that dying man in the street accuse him. Every farmer we call to testify will blame him more than the real sharpers. They believed in him and joined because of him. Judge, we've got to save the boy. If only for the sake of his sister, 
Kentuck, what am I going to do? Take it easy, Danny. Doc will do all he can. Go on home, Danny. We'll try to figure some way out of this. What about him, Doc? If that Frago starts yelling about Johnson's killing, and the Doc whispering in the judge's ear, why, we're just about convicted. It's not too late. And I'm going to clear out. No, you're not. I've got up too much here, and I'm not quitting. We haven't lost that case yet. It might never come to trial. Not come to trial? You forget young Johnson. When I tangled him up with our plans and made him our puppet, it was just such an emergency as this. The doctor still thinks a lot of young Danny's sister. Don't forget that. He cut off his right arm rather than do anything to hurt her. You can't come in here. Who can't come in there? Why, I'm a deputy. What are you talking about? Deputy for what? Deputy for the governor of Iowa. Ain't that enough? Stand aside. I've got a little present for you, Abbott. And the best wishes of the governor and Doc Kenton. We're giving a little party in court tomorrow. And seeing that you're the special invited guest, this little summons will keep you from forgetting to remember not to forget to come. Oh, uh, <clears throat> you in on the party too, Clark. Oh, we haven't forgotten you. No, sir, Bob. Here's your little invite, all nice and pretty. And just in case you forget to come tomorrow or lose your way, we'll have a special escort all ready. Nice day today, but looks like it might cloud up tomorrow. So, the case will never be called a trial, eh? Mary Lee, there's nothing I can do. Keith, you know Danny's innocent. He wouldn't do any wrong. I know that, but Sadamut is dead against him. There isn't a farmer in the valley who believed Danny was an innocent tool. Drop everything for my sake. Mary Lee, you don't realize what you're asking. If I do that, it means that every man here will lose his farm, his home. You wouldn't want to see that happen. First it was father, now it's daddy. <laughs> if you do this to my brother, I'll hate you as long as I live. I received your summons, Dr. Kenton. I was really surprised to get it. Surprised? Why should you be surprised? Because of other persons it might involve. Might it not be more sensible if I tore this up? Go ahead, tear it up. But it won't do you any good. You're being very foolish, Doctor. Throwing away what means everything to you. Your future happiness. For people who a short time ago turned against you and were ready to drive you out of town. You don't owe them anything. Nothing. Court opens in the morning, Abbott. Be there or I'll have you dragged there. I don't think 
I'm DeWater. The first court of Johnson County, authorized by His Excellency, the Governor of Iowa, is now in session. Call your first witness. Nels Corey, will you please come forward? Please sit in that chair. Nels, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. You swear to tell the truth? Yes, sir. Is that your signature? Yes, sir. You signed this in the office of the Johnson County Land Company, didn't you? Yes. Yes, I did. When you put your name on this paper, did you have any intentions of assigning over your property rights to that company? No, I didn't. Get over there, or I'll let you have it again. What happened, Kentuck? Why, this scurvy wood tick tried to kill Nels. Yeah? Well, uh, bring him inside. He has plenty of talking to do. Come on, there. Shake your boots. Come on. Get going. Come on, there. Move you. Why, you want to coyote, you? Come on. Move it up there. I ought to shoot your ears right off your forehead. Get in there. Why, you long, hungry-looking, wall-eyed shite poke you? That's the man that threw us off our form. Why, you? Damn it. So you're the leader of the Night Riders, responsible for these outrages, plan those killings. What? What are you talking about? I never planned any killings. No, oh, I... I only obeyed orders. Yeah. I... I did what I was told. Them... To, uh... Whoa! You ain't going no place yet. There's another one for you, Mr. Deputy. Take care of them until the judge is ready to try them for murder. Do we have to give them a trial? I know a quicker way to get rid of these old cats. Nothing like that anymore, Kentuck. Jumping cheaper. Looks like the good old shooting days is gone forever. Stop. Danny, this puts you in the clear. And me too, I hope. 